I and we are clear enough in the direction we need to go. And I suppose it's not just it's not just one thing. There's a, a few elements to that in relation. Um, look, I suppose to the way we set up personnel, you know, and stuff like that. And um, but I, you know, I think it's you know it wouldn't be accurate to say like there's one particular thing. Yeah. Um, there's a number of elements, and look, and we're working on those already. Yeah, I suppose when you look back at the summer, the disappointment would have to be that you know against Tipperary. You showed a lot of the good traits about you know how you play football. You eked out a result against a good side as well, and then for it to be, I guess, so disappointing in the two important games after that. Yeah, absolutely. You summed it up perfectly there. Um, you know, look, I suppose when the draw was made for the championship, the tip game was identified as a as a must win, a game that probably felt people felt we, we wouldn't win. Um, and you know we played you know very well on the night, um, played extremely well. You know I felt we after I, I felt particularly at the end of the league, Ross Common game in particular, even though we'd lost it, I thought we were going quite well. Mm. Um, and you know and then you know came up with a, a big performance in the tip game. And you know what you wanted then after that is you know again good performances in in, in big matches. And looking neither of them you know we, we didn't get it we didn't get it in either games uh, against Kerry or Tyrone. Um, we had one good, you know, obviously 10, 15 minute patch at the start of the Kerry game, um, but really after that, you know, it was a massive disappointment. There's no other way of putting it. I suppose it must have hurt particularly, you know, given you know you're a former player, you're a you know very um, driven Cork man and lover of Cork football, uh, to have come here for the first big night in Porky Cueve and to put in such a flat performance. Yeah, I didn't. I look. I don't. I didn't get too excited about that. I think. Look, in the end of the day, whether you, you know, I know it was the first and and all that. And look, it added probably to the sense of occasion. But I think all those things occur for for people who are oh, watching. And, and, and yeah, I think so. And um, you know, look, it was um, whether the game was here or in Parky Rin or the old Parky Heath. You know, look, it, it was the nature of of the performance um, and particularly after a very bright start as well in that game you know um, but look that's the way it goes and you you kind of you look you regroup and you start again and I look part of it is that you have a I suppose a very open and, and frank you know analysis of it between the management team um, you know with players and so on and look and as I say look that process is, is ongoing. And when you were talking, I suppose, uh, to the county board after this year, maybe having the review of it, were they very clear they're still very committed to the three-year plan? Because they, they really stressed that when you were appointed. Yeah, look, it, it's a, a three-year plan. But look, in the end of the day, be it a five-year plan or, or, or a three-year term, look, in the end of the day, the results results um, speak for themselves. And look, you have to be realistic about it. Um, you know, if we're standing here, you know, next year and we have the same type of a performance and set of results you, you know you, you, you're vulnerable and that's it you know um, as a manager and a management team and, and that's the way it should be you know um, the danger with the danger with you know three or longer terms is that um, people wait and we were very clear last year we wanted to get the max out of out of year one um, and look it's funny the way it goes you know we felt in, in May we were very much going the right direction and by the time we got to the end of you know middle of July um, you know the the season had had you know finished on a on a on a huge low, but three year term, five year term, you still have to perform and you still have to get results and and um, and I suppose look we'll be looking to see and supporters will and the board will and we ourselves as a a group will be looking to see progress in you know in our development this year again. Does that revise your targets for year two in any way, or are they the same as they would have been thinking into year two last year? No, I think I, look I think they're more or less the same. Um, you know, look, we we hope to be in 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 you know in consideration for for promotion from Division Two last year. I know we finished actually third bottom, but we were actually closer than than than, than that looked. The look, the league can, is very tight and and can can swing on on you know on very small margins. Um, I think in game was a game six against Clare. We you know it was twelve all. Um, going into injury time in that game, and um, look, if we had won, we would be going up to Roscommon fighting for promotion. Um, as it happened, we lost the last kick out uh, in injury time, and, and Claire went down and, and, and scored, and 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 had a, you know and, and performed well on the night and deserved the win. But they're the kind of fine margins that you know that between being involved in promotion and and being stuck in the middle of the table. So look, we start out again. Obviously, it's an ambition to to get out of Division Two, but it's actually a tougher league, you know, this year than it was last year. Um, obviously, with Fermanagh and Armagh coming up, and and Kildare and Donegal coming down. So you know it's 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 actually going to be harder than it was, but look, that's still the the the, the first hope. 
I suppose when you're in development and you're in transition, you want to be playing Division 1 football and Super 8 football if you can. You do, but I suppose the other side of that is, look, you know, you've excellent games there against Kildare and excellent games against um, um, uh, against Donegal. And, you know, to be fair, look, for Malaga got for final last year, Armagh had a, you know, had a bit of a run and uh, and so on. So, look, there, there are very good games there. Yes, of course, we want to be in Division 1, but um, look, Kildare are, you know, by definition, really a Division 1 team and so are Donegal and... Um, you know, and they're a Super 8 side and, uh, and, and and so look, we'll try to judge ourselves there but um, you have to win the other games as well, you know. Mm. It is a period of transition though as well because just talking to Paul a few minutes ago, Paul Kerrigan, he was saying there's only a couple of lads left now from the All-Ireland team in 2010. That kind of group has all moved on now and it is a rebuilding phase for your team. It is, but I, again, I look at, I come back to what I said earlier, uh, I, I, look, I suppose the first thing is, you know, look, 2010, and that group, and, and, and I've said this previously last year, you know, they were a great group and, and, you know, and great group from the point of view that they responded from, you know, they had an awful lot of disappointment and defeats along the road and they kept going and they kept improving and developing. But we need to stop talking about 2010, like it's long gone, you know, and long gone. And um, we're very, you know, we're, we're glad to have, you know, I suppose the experience of, of the fellows who were left, but really we need to park that and move it on. And I suppose the other one is, look, that the danger... I don't want transition to become a crutch for or an excuse, you know, for for this team and, and and for this group. And you look at, let's say, you know, other counties would have far less resources, financial, um, club-wise, player-wise, and so on and so forth. And you know, certainly, you know, we need to be getting a lot more out of the the players we have, and uh, and not kind of be. You know, allowing this kind of transition phase to be, you know, an excuse to to not perform. Was this summer hard on you then? Was this a summer that hurt then? Because it can't have been easy coming off the back of those two heavy defeats. Yeah, look, look there. Look, I suppose the most the, the most disappointing thing about it is look that you put in this 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 level of work. Right, there was huge work went in. You know, players there. There, I, look, I've said this. They're a very very good group of players. Um, you know, overall very committed. Um, they want to improve. They want to succeed with Cork. And, you know, there was an awful lot of work went into it. And that's the most disappointing. Look, there's no guarantee you can go play any game, you know, that, that you're going to win. And and so it's not the, you know, if you go out and you perform and you're beaten, fair enough, look, you'll accept it. So it was the, the nature of the performance, I suppose, was the disappointment. Had I hard summer? Not really, look. And I suppose in the end of the day, you also have to kind of believe in what you're doing and believe in yourself as a, you know, as a, a manager and a management team. And um, that's not to say that you're not open to... To different ideas and change but look I, I suppose you have to believe in your, your fundamentals as well and I suppose I have to stand by that you know And you were keen to stress I was reading back your quotes from Port Leash after the Tyrone game that it wasn't a case of players not working hard here Yeah look you said They were working as hard as any other team They are they are, and they're working very hard and they're very committed and um, you know and they're I, I actually said this last year look they're they're actually very serious about their football right and at times I would probably say too serious, you know, like uh, because uh, you know, if you get uh, how do I put this to you, you know, if you get too kind of overburdened by it and too, you know, obsessed, you can actually underperform, you know, and it's about, I suppose, pitching it at the right level and, and looking that's something we'll work at um, at doing this year to make sure that um, that the players, you know, are pitched at the right level coming into the matches because, um, like, they want to succeed, there's no, there's no question about that. Um, so look, we've done a lot of work, um, you know, since we were beaten in July. A lot of work in the background, um, you know, and kind of, you know, talking to different people, trying to, I suppose, maintain what we had last year, and then maybe, you know, add one or two people into the backroom team that we feel will kind of add value and bring their expertise, you know. So look, we're working on that, and um, uh, I'm, I'm confident we'll have one or two people in, you know. Gaelic football might look very different by the time the league comes around if these uh, standing rule changes come around. What's your feeling on what's been published this week? I I I I I suppose I I keep an open mind on it. Um, look, I think the idea behind it is 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 positive one and and well intentioned. I can think it was just the first thing, um, you know, to try and 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 make the game you know a more positive spectacle, right? Um, you know, one or two like the hand pass, for example, the three consecutive hand passes and then the foot pass. I wonder how that's going to work. I can see it okay out the pitch. We'll say you know where you could kick the ball long, but if you're a corner forward inside and the, you know and there's three fellas around you, you know I'd have to kick the ball. I don't know. Um, but I look. I think overall, 
you know, I think they, we need to move, you know, in a probably a more positive direction with the game. And I suppose what people need to kind of understand is that the way the rules are at the moment, and this applies to every manager, um, you know, if you're winning a game w with five or six minutes to go, you know, every manager will tell their teams to foul, OK? Yeah. And, and I suppose the way it's set up at the moment, you're rewarded for doing so. Um, you know, and uh, so I think, look, if the rule changes reward teams who are positive, you know, who want to play attacking football, um, look, I think they're a step in the right direction, but I suppose we have to wait and see, really. Yeah, I won't speak for Mickey Hart or Jim Gavin, but I'm sure they probably think we often have a lot of men back, but we can break at tremendous pace and play attacking football when we're going on the break against the other team. Just because we players in our own half doesn't necessarily mean we're defensive. Yeah, look, yeah, that that is a fair point. You can have, you know, you can have plenty of players back and and be a, a counter-attacking team and and break at pace and um, and so on. But look, I suppose what, I, the way I would see it is, look, I I think there is still a reward in the game for play, for teams and for players, you know, who foul persistently, uh, who who foul tactically, particularly late on in matches and. And and I'm saying, look, and I'm quite honest about it. You know, your team to do of course it. I would, yeah. of course I would, because look, in the end of the day, all anybody's interested in is winning, and and that's look, you know, what have you asked me about? You've asked me about the defeats against Tyrone, the defeats against you know uh, against yeah. Kerry, and you know, look, if we'd won, no one would care how we got there. Yeah. In terms of the Sinbin, do you think it's a good idea, better than the black card? I don't know. Um, I, I suppose I don't know. And uh, look, it was tried previously. Um, I don't know. I my thing about the black card was look, I I actually thought the black card. You know, I'd have been for it and pro it and and still am. Uh, I think it stopped an awful lot of the kind of body checking and stuff like that that was going on. But I, I suppose the problem with it is with ten minutes to go in a match. You know, you're almost actually you you know you're still rewarded almost for fouling because you know you're replaced if you have to go. Um, you have a good player in reserve. It doesn't really make, it make does, a difference. It doesn't, yeah. And um, and actually, by the time the black card is awarded and everything else, it's almost it's your to your advantage because you run down the clock even more, you know. So I suppose I would have probably looked at um, something like you know um, the player not being replaced. You know, in the last ten minutes, black card player has not been replaced. You know, maybe it you know something like twenty one yard free in front of the goal with possession of the ball and the clock stopped. I think if you actually could cut out particularly in the end, you know, at the, the, the last 10 minutes of matches, I think if you cut out that kind of folding that was going on, um, I think we'd have a real, real great spectacle, you know. On a final note, if the changes were to come in and these get passed after the talks, does that change your winter training plan for the players? Because if, trying to get five new rules to train in players ahead of the league, that would be uh, quite a bit of time, I'd imagine, spent just on them. Yeah, it, look, it will change things. But um, look... Uh, I, I, I suppose, look, what are you doing in training? Look, week in, week out, you're trying to create scenarios for players that they're going to meet, you know, in, in matches and be different systems that they come up against or whatever. And so, look, it's a it's an added, uh, I suppose, it's an added element to, um, to the training that will have to be taken account of. But, look, it'll be the same for everyone and we'll do it.